If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 24, continuing in our study of Revelation, <clears throat> we must use other places in the Bible that uh, tell about the same thing to get an accurate picture. And, uh, and this is called the Olivet Discourse of Christ, because he was on the Mount of Olives, and he gives in uh, chapter 24 a summary of the entire time of, of the time of the end of the end of the age and it's without symbols it's without mystery he just lays it out straight for us and this is the only place I think in the Bible where it's just clear cut like that and we can use it as a skeleton uh, in when we begin to study the meat and flesh of uh, that's given to us in Revelation and and so forth. <clears throat> but Christ gives us the entire time of the end here in Matthew chapter 24. Now, I'd like you to take notice if you've studied Revelation that when Christ is describing uh, the end time events in chapter 24, he is telling them by way of the seals, the seal uh, seals that are spoken of in Revelation, from 1 through 7. And we've been taught, especially lately in the Left Behind books and, 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 and so forth, recently that the seals are all at the beginning, and then come the trumpets, and then come uh, the bowl judgments at the end, and that maybe the seal judgments are all the first half of those three and a half years, and then the trumpets. Well, I beg to differ here. I think... Uh, that Christ, when he's speaking of the seal judgments or the seals uh, here, goes from one to seven all the way through and inscribe, describes the entire time using the seals. And if you look in Revelation, you notice Christ is the one who's opening the seals. He's the one who's opening the seals. The trumpets are not opened or the bowls are not opened. They are, are uh, a direct result of something else. But Christ is the one himself opening the seals in Revelation, and he also is describing these end times uh, <clears throat> that are talked about in Revelation in Matthew chapter 24. So I'm attempting to demonstrate here to you that the whole time period is described in the seals. Now we'll get to the trumpets and the bold judgments later and uh, see where those might, might come in. But uh, definitely, I think it's clear here that the whole time period is expressed in the seals and that you don't need, you don't have to, you know, jam the trumpets and the, the bowl judgments in there to get it all in the seven years. I think the, uh, the, seal, seal, the things that are in the seals are kind of a, an overall picture, a uh, heavenly view, if you will, of the whole time period. Okay, so let's get started. Um, let's start in verse... Uh, chapter 24, verse 1, as you can see on the board there, the seals are mentioned in order. Now, I'm hesitating. Uh, I, I keep wanting to call them sealed judgments because that's what I've always heard, but they're not judgments. Um, the bowls are in Revelation are the only thing that's described as judgments in the words of, of Christ and the words of God, so I'm going to refrain from calling them sealed judgments. But um, <clears throat> we'll look in uh, verse 1. And Jesus is answering the question, as his disciples are saying, uh, when will be the time of the end? What will be the, the sign of your coming and the end of the age? They're asking him, they're wanting to know. Um, and in verse 4, he answers them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now that's interesting that that's the first thing he says. Because this whole time period of the end, the end of the age, there's go is going to be... Uh, deception. Deception will be the theme here. Uh, take heed that no man deceive you. Most of the world by far will be deceived into believing a lie. And that is the first seal that we read about in Revelation. Um, and you can see on the board there, Deception Antichrist. The first rider uh, in, the, in the four horsemen of the apocalypse is the rider on the white horse going forth conquering and to conquer. And he is the Antichrist riding on a white horse because he appears to be uh, peaceful and he does conquer by peace and by his trickery and, and political uh, vice. 
And it's all a big deception. He appears to be this great leader, this great peacemaker, this uh, answer to all our problems. He will appear that way. So that, that's deception. That's the first seal. And we go on to verse 6 in chapter 24. Uh, well, let, let's do verse 5 first. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Now, that's not people saying that, oh, I'm, I'm Jesus Christ. That's people saying that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, a lot of people interpret that as saying people are coming around like David Koresh and saying, I'm Jesus Christ. Nobody believes that. Would you believe me if I said, I'm Jesus Christ? No, but many will come in his name, in Jesus, saying that he's the Christ and will have some sort of message and they'll deceive many. In verse 6, we read, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Okay, the end is not yet. <clears throat> this is just the very beginning of, of, the, of the troubles. We'll see. But the seal in Revelation, the second seal, is a seal of war. The rider on the horse, he's riding a red horse of war. And he's going to take peace from the earth and there'll be wars. That's the second seal. So we read about, in order, the seals here in, in Matthew. Now we go on to uh, verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines. Now we know that the third seal is famine. So in verse, 20, uh, in verse 7 we read of famine, and that's the third seal. The rider on the uh, black horse, I think it is. In Revelation, and pestilences, and that, as we know, is the fourth seal, the rider on the pale horse, uh, disease, pestilence, um, you've read about the Black Death or the Black Plague in, uh, in, what is it, the 1300s or the Dark Ages or whenever that was, apologize if I get that wrong, um, <clears throat> And in verse 8, Christ says, all these are the beginning of sorrow. This is just the beginning of it. Now, in verse 9, we have a separation here because we know that this seven-year period, in the first half of it, the first three and a half years, we're going to have this, these uh, first four seals. And the fifth seal is going to be martyrs. You can read about the fifth seal in Revelation. Don't have time to do it here. But there's going to be great bloodshed. People are going to die for their witness and their testimony of Christ. They won't recant their faith in Him. And they're going to be killed for it. These are the martyrs. And, it, and so that's why Christ says in verse 9, then you got to read between the lines there that this is the second half of that seven years. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. All right? Many shall be offended. Many betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise. That's in that second half, and shall deceive. Iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall become cold or wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the end of what? The end of the age. The same shall be saved. Now, <clears throat> A lot of times, when God is telling you something in the Old Testament, New Testament, he'll, he'll say something on a subject, and then he'll repeat the same exact thing with more detail or a, different, a little different perspective. You'll notice that a lot. And if you look for that, you'll see it so much in the Bible. And I think in verse 15, that's what he's doing. He's going back and then talking about that, that period again, where they'll be killed and, uh, and delivered up to be, uh, to be killed. Uh, in verse 14, we read, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. Um, <clears throat> maybe those, it says witness. Maybe those are the two witnesses that are in Revelation. Some people believe the witnesses are in the first half. I tend to think they're in the second half. But uh, we'll see. And uh, you can can decide for yourself. It's not important to your salvation if you know exactly where they go. Uh, faith in Christ is the only thing that will save us, right? Satan himself is an expert in Bible prophecy. Devils know that Christ is, is real and tremble. We must have faith in Him and believe Him and follow Him in this life personally for salvation. And that's it. No matter how, if we don't know any of these things that we're talking about here. 
All right. Verse 15, when you shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet, that's when uh, the Antichrist will is killed and then he, he, he's healed kind of uh, miraculously and everyone will follow after him. He's mimicking the death and resurrection of Christ. He'll stand in the holy place in the temple showing himself to be God. He's going to do that right in the middle. Then that's where it gets really bad. And so Christ is describing again, it almost seems like he's talking to the Jews now, telling the same thing, but talking to the Jews directly here in verse 15. When, you'll, when you see that, you better flee into the mountains um, and just run. Everybody, if you're on your housetop, don't take anything. Get out and, and get away because it's going to be bad during that time. Uh, let's go to verse 21. For then thou shalt be great tribulation. See, we're talking about that second half, such as not was since the beginning of the world. We're talking about this, the fifth seal again. Um, Nor ever shall be, except those days should be short, no flesh should be saved. Um, <clears throat> and verse 24, false Christ, false prophets. Again, we're still talking about that last half. So make sure you realize that uh, verse 15, maybe even verse 14, is, a, is going back and talking about that time again of uh, when everybody's going to be killed and there'll be false prophets and so forth. Okay, it's almost as if he explains it to the world or maybe even to the church and then he, then he, then he talks to the Jews directly. Um, <clears throat> and I like to leave some, some wiggle room here because I'm not sure and nobody else is either, but we like to give all options so that we can, can try to accurately have an understanding of, of the things that will be going on, even if we don't can't put it in the exact chronological order. But moving on, I'm going to show you something interesting here. <clears throat> We're going to have to skip to verse 29. All right, read this in verse 29. Listen to the words. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Did you hear that? Nobody ever talks about this that I've heard. Immediately after. Christ says it's after the tribulation of those days. All right, we all have, have heard that the bold judgments, which are the wrath of God, it says in Revelation, are during that second half of the tribulation period, but it doesn't say that here. It says immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. Now listen, we're, he's describing the sixth seal here in verse 29. Sun darkened, moon shall not give her light, stars shall fall from heaven, powers of heaven be shaken. Then will appear the sign, a sign of the Son of Man, and all of the tribes of the earth will mourn. Now skip over to Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. Listen, the same things. The sun becomes black, a sackcloth of hair. Moon became his blood, which is also not giving its light. Stars fall from heaven, which is the shaking of the heavens. Same things mentioned in Matthew. And then listen, what all the people say, because they're mourning. And listen what they say. Listen what everyone says because they're not deceived anymore. They all know that what the two witnesses said was true because all these things are happening that they said would happen. They say, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Now we've always heard the day of the Lord or the day of his wrath is that second half of the tribulation, but it's not. That's the wrath of Satan because he knows he has a short time and he has 42 months to do what he's going to do. The day of the Lord is after that. Listen what they're saying in the sixth seal. The day of the Lord has come. It's about to be here. It hasn't come, but we know it's about to be. Who's going to stand? No one is deceived. Everybody knows what it is now because the things, the things that the two witnesses were saying are true. The things they said would happen would happen. They were were raised up into heaven, and so after being killed, and so what they said is true. All right, so the sixth seal, go back to Matthew 24, verse 29. <clears throat> they shall mourn, because they'll see the sign. Now they'll actually see it, and everyone will know what's about to happen. What's about to happen? The day of the Lord, the day of His wrath. The only thing, the trumpets are not dis, uh, expressed as wrath. The seals are not never expressed as wrath in the Bible. You look for it. The wrath is only in the bowls. It says in Revelation, in these bowls or in these vials is filled up the wrath of God in the bowls and they're poured out. All right, so this is after that. Immediately after the tribulation will be the 